y'all. Welcome to the Suburban Stitcher podcast. My name is Diane and today is July 11th, 2018. Um, I just want to welcome you to the show today. I am coming to you from Richmond, Texas, where I live here with my husband and our two boys and our dog in the suburbs of a suburb of Houston. <laughs> Um, I hope that y'all are having lovely summers and that you are getting hopefully lots of time in for crafting, lots of vacations. I'm getting lots of pictures from all of you all, um, all over the country, the world, enjoying lots of fun summery things and some of my friends even enjoying some fun wintry things on the other side of the equator. So that's really exciting. Um, I just hope that whatever you're doing, that you are having a lovely time. I do have some announcements for this week's episode. Um, the first is that we have hit two pretty big milestones, both on YouTube and on Instagram. So as of right now, <laughs> we are at 11.1 subscribers on Instagram, which is, or followers, whatever their word is. 11.1 followers on Instagram, which is amazing. Um, 11.1 thousand, 11,100, right? I don't have, anyway. 11.1K is what it says. <laughs> so I don't know the exact, exact number. Um, and then we've hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is amazing. I'm so excited by that. Um, if you love this video and you would like to subscribe, I encourage you to do that by clicking right down there, hit the subscribe button, and you'll get notified of all of the new videos that I post here. Um, and if you like this video as well, then you can hit the like, the thumbs up button, and that helps other people find my podcast as well as other podcasts like this one. And I really would encourage you to do that. I appreciate all of that. And I don't often remind you or ask for a thumbs up or subscribes, but um, it does help me and it helps the business and the channel. And so thank you so much for everybody that does that. Um, and because those are two pretty big milestones, we will be having a giveaway on Instagram this week and I will be posting that over there. So please, please, please keep your eyes peeled for that. And we will be having a giveaway on the YouTube channel. I think we're going to do that next week because next week is a really big episode, um, milestone episode. And I will, I say next week. Yeah, we could do it next week because I'll still be in town. We'll get to that later, but yes, 150 episodes. Oh, what? Can't believe it. 150 episodes of Suburban Stitcher, which seems insane. Um, so we have some other giveaways that I need to announce. The Suburban Wrap Knit Along um, it has ended. That ended June 30th. And the winner over there, that was a cowl. Just if you were knitting a Suburban Wrap, it did not have to be out of Suburban Stitcher yarn. But if you were knitting it, go over there, chat about it, post, encourage each other, show off your finished objects. And um, I picked a winner over there. It was post number 36. And she was showing off her Suburban Stitcher yarn that she purchased to make that. And I think she did finish it, I think almost positive and it's you creek cottage um go ahead and send me a message and i will get your prize over to you you have a skein of yarn um i think that i'm going to choose the skein that i talked about last time that's the skein of dirty ballerina from um uh just totally went blank queen city yarn and I am going to gift that to you. So send me a Ravelry message with your mailing address and I will get that out to you. We also have another, um, well, two other cows that are still going. We have the Prairie Girl Designs cow that is going until July 30th or 31st, 2018, whatever July has. <laughs> I'm so bad at the days. Um, whatever July has, it's till the end of July. And 
that is any prairie girl design and it does not have to be out of suburban stitch or yarn again this is just a podcast knit along we're encouraging each other showing off all of those amazing designs and patterns and um, that knit along goes until the end of the month and there will be another prize drawn for that cow and then lastly we have the get suburban cow and this one i'm so excited about this winner I actually almost didn't draw a random number because I wanted this particular project, finished object, to win. And then I thought, no, I need to draw the random number and it won. It was meant to win because it's so amazing. Um, the winner this week for the Get Suburban Cal is post number 56 and that is Tivoli, T-I-V-O-L-I 17. And she knit a find your fade shawl out of completely suburban stitcher yarn. It's absolutely amazing. It's gorgeous. And if you will send me a Ravelry message, I will gift you a pattern on Ravelry for um, any pattern up to $8 US. So send me a message on Ravelry with your pattern choice and I will send that over to you. So congratulations, Tivoli17. Thank you so, so much. And as a refresher, a reminder, the Get Suburban Cal, hashtag Get Suburban, is um, any project that is 50% or more knit out of Suburban Stitcher Yarn qualifies. So whenever you finish it, no matter when it was started, if you finish it between, you know, any time in 2018, you can post that finished object in the finished object thread and you will be entered to end a pro in it. Blah, 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 blah. you will be entered to win a prize and it is a cumulative or no it's not cumulative not cumulative it's anytime you finish something you enter a new post so the more times you enter the more chances you have to win that's what i meant to say um Okay, so let's get on to works in progress. I have no finished objects this week. Um, I have been knitting quite a bit since the last podcast, and it is all on brand new things, pretty much. Um, well, no, two brand new things, one continuous work in progress. Um, okay, so let's go with the new things first. First up is I am knitting the Glomentide Mystery Knit Along. So caveat, big flashing lights right here. This is a spoiler. I am knitting the Glomentide Mystery Knit Along by Isolde Teague. Clue 3 came out Monday and it is Wednesday. So clue three is what the clue that we are on. Um, it's the clue that I am on. So I am up to date. I'm keeping up with this mystery knit along, which is never happens. But I, all of that to say, don't look if you don't want to see it, if you don't want to be spoiled. Um, so first I will show the yarn that I'm using. Um, and I will be brutally honest, the reason that I chose this mystery knit along is because of the yarn. I wasn't totally interested in the shawl right at first because I just, I just wasn't. I have knit both follow your arrows um, when Isolde did those as mystery knit alongs. I did knit both of those and I love them. I wear both of them. So I don't really know why this one didn't immediately appeal to me. It just, it just didn't. And then I saw the yarn and that the original yarn for the design was available and I had to have it. Um, and since I paid for overseas shipping and in euros for this yarn, I am keeping up <laughs> to justify this purchase. So the yarn, it's these three skeins in this gorgeous fade. It is La Bienna May yarn that was designed specifically for this mystery knit along. 
and the colors are Flora Doe, D-O-E, and Fauna. So basically, each yarn has a different base color, but all of the speckles and the accents are the same in each yarn. So this has like the lightest base, medium for Doe, and Fauna is the darkest base. I absolutely... I love it. And it's funny because I saw these and I thought, I mean, even when they came in, I was like, okay, well, those are pretty, but you know, okay. Like I, I'm, I liked it, but I thought, well, it's kind of, I don't know. I still wasn't smitten with it. And that has all changed now that I have started this project. So I, um, again, I want to do a big, I'm about to show you the shawl. Um, okay, so this is parts one and two. Here's the crazy thing about this shawl is that this is an interesting construction, to say the least. Um, this is clues one and two. So you can see that fade there. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are some really fun stitch details here that I, I'm just in love with so much. I love, oh my gosh, this fade is so subtle and beautiful. I absolutely love it. And then look at this, right? Like who knows what's happening here? Who knows? Um, and that's clues one and two. And then we were told to cut all the yarn and put this to the side. Clue three is on a new set of needles. <laughs> And this is very much like the find your fade shape where you are sort of knitting this little bikini bottom thing. So that's what's happening. <laughs> I have no idea where this is going, but I've never been so completely questioning and simultaneously trusting and excited about a mystery knit along. I have tried to knit West Knits um, mysteries several times and I'm now in the camp with <laughs> another friend of mine and I were both laughing. We were saying we're sort of hanging our hat proudly on the fact that we have never knit a, St a Stephen West design. <laughs> Although I do have yarn and have picked out yarn many times for an exploration station. That's one of the only ones, at least right now, that I could see myself knitting. Um, so anyway, so that's Glomantide. I am loving it. I'm about a little over halfway through clue number three. It's only Wednesday. The clues come out every Monday. I'm keeping up just fine. I'm so, so, so excited. I, I can't even tell you. Oh, and this is in my bed of roses bag that she gifted me um, a few months ago. I showed it off, but I, it's my first time using it and I absolutely love it. So especially if you are in the UK and you want to buy from her, but her shipping and prices are so reasonable, even um, for the US, it is worth every single penny. Um, okay, so next up, that over there, next up is a new pattern. It's not a new pattern. Well, I mean, newish, I think, maybe. Maybe it came out in 2018, the spring. Um, this is in a Mrs. Brown's bucket bag, which again is a favorite. Um, okay, this is a new cast on for me. So when I was at Zombie Apocalypse a few weeks ago, I saw this shawl that Noni Baloney <laughs> was wearing and absolutely fell in love with it. Like she, the, she, she was wearing it and it was strikingly gorgeous. It was a fade. It looks like of a thousand colors. And I thought, oh my gosh, 
that is unbelievable. What is the pattern? How did you do it? What did you do? Come to find out, it is a pattern called Gems and Jewels. And I thought maybe it was a pattern that she had just turned into a fade, but no, it is meant to fade. And this is amazing. I think the other reason that I was drawn to her so much is that um, she used her hedgehog yarn stash. She said she has a ton of hedgehog and she kind of kept saving it and saving it and nothing was ever right. And so she wasn't using it. And I thought, well, I can relate to that. <laughs> I seem to be a collector of that and not a user. So I came home, I guess, last week, one day last week or last weekend. No, last week. I pulled out all, I looked up this pattern, looked to see what I needed. I pulled out all of my hedgehog yarn and I made a fade and it's amazing. So the shawl again is called Gems and Jewels and you'll have to go on Ravelry to see the full picture. Oh, it's by, I can tell you that. It is by Alina Apasova, Apasova. Not really sure how that's pronounced and I'm so sorry, but Alina. Um, so I have pulled out my hedgehog stash like i said and that is what i'm using i am mixing yarn bases i don't care i was going for colors with this um so the first color that i started with is actually a potluck from my local yarn store they got this for their seven year um, anniversary and it's called seven year itch so this was a one of a kind that i don't know if it's available anymore but it is like clown barf for sure. This is from Park Avenue Yarns, but it's Hedgehog um, in the sock base. And the second color that I'm using, this is Bubble, and this is on the Skinny Singles. So we have this one that kind of has a lot of blues with colors, and then this is a teal aqua with colors. And here is what I have done so far. So again, it starts with this kind of what I will call the find your fade bikini start. <laughs> and the really cool thing that I love about this one is that it has these short row lace bubbles. And because of this highly speckled yarn, the fades are so subtle and the bubbles are in the fade part. I just love it. Love it so much. So um, I have completely finished knitting with the first color, this potluck color, and I'm working in the bubble. So do y'all want to see the rest of my fade? So I have these two. And let me reach over here and I will show you the rest. Just scoot up a little bit which is not very fortunate for y'all because today is not a makeup day. It's so hot. I can't even, you guys. Um, so next up is going to be Bounce, which has that teal but greens and yellows. Then Wild Card. Then Anemone. And these are all on skinny singles, so these three. And then we switch back to sock. Um, this is Tulp. I think it's Tulp, right? Or is it Tulip? I don't know. But this is the exclusive one from Stephen and Penelope that I was gifted. Then after that is, this was a club colorway, Cat's Pajamas. And then the last one is Venus. Oh, this was a club colorway as well. So, wow. Can you see that? <laughs> I mean, I have all of these colors, right? And they were just sitting here. So I'm making one big, crazy, neon, speckled, awesome shawl. And I'm 
so excited about it. I cannot tell you. Um, so that has been taking a lot. Oop, that has been taking a lot of my knitting brain power excitingness. And the last work in progress is my Sunset Highway sweater. And I talked last time about how I worked a ton on it at um, Zombie and Apocalypse. And I really did. I worked quite, quite a bit on it. Um, and then I also talked about how I was going to need a third skein of yarn and that I was going to dye it up. Well, I did. And spoiler alert, it's impossible to match. <sighs> Even when you're the yarn dyer, dye lots are totally a thing. So I, the two skeins that I had at first were this color and they, I don't have the other one with me right here, but it is exactly this color. And I've been alternating those throughout. This is the closest that I could get. It does not have the same amount of speckle. It's, it's a lot bluer. I don't know if you're going to be able to see on this, but oh yeah, you can tell right there. It's a lot bluer. And this was after three pans of yarn attempts to match it. So, um, I thought, well, I, I, then I waited like a week. I was like, I just don't like any of these options. It's not right, but I really want to finish the sweater for Ryan Beck. So what's a girl to do? So I just put my big girl panties on yesterday and wound up the skein of yarn and said, you know what? It's just going to be what it's going to be. So I cut one of the balls that I'd been using out and I have started working in the new skein and it's totally tellable. <laughs> it's total. I can totally tell that I've added in a different color. Um, let's see if I can show you on here. So I added it in, I don't know if you can tell, maybe it's just my crazy brain that can tell. I added it in about there. It's just a lot bluer. Maybe you can't tell as much. There's definitely less concentration of speckles. Oh my gosh, what is up with all these crazy, like no caller ID calls lately. Quit calling me. Um, the concentration of speckles goes down because that one skein doesn't have as many, which again is okay. Um, let's see if I can do this without ripping off all of the stitches off the needles. Because I want to show you right at around this part is where I feel like it's the most noticeable. So, I don't know. I think I'm just going to keep going. I think in the scheme of things, it's probably going to be just fine. If it's a little bit lighter on the bottom, it's just a little bit lighter on the bottom. Again, it doesn't start until right basically that, this hook right there. So you can sort of tell. Yeah, I can tell right there. So there's part of me that wants to stop knitting until I decide what to do. The other part of me is like, okay, this is ridiculous. It's really not going to be that noticeable in the end and keep going. And then the other part of me, after a suggestion from a friend, um, suggested that I keep all three balls connected and like every half of a round pick up a new ball. And so it would just be random as to which ones I was picking up each time. And I, my brain can't quite figure out how that works, but I'm intrigued by it. But I feel like you would have to have four skeins for that, not three. Anyway, so Anyway, that's where I am on this. I'm 
sort of paralyzed by having to decide what to do. Um, I'm also very tempted to start working in the other little partial skein again so that like every three rows I have a lighter stripe instead of every other row and then on the sleeves I can do every other row I don't know I don't know um, what I do know is that I have a little over 11 inches knit from the underarm gosh it's so pretty right guys um, I have a little over 11 inches from the underarm knit and the pattern says to go to 15 but when I try that on on my body it starts to hit right at the widest part of my body which is not a super flattering point on me so I think that um, after talking with my friends I think we decided to stop it at about 14 inches instead and then um, and then start the short rows and ribbing and all of that stuff from there so gosh I just love this though I love it I wish I could just make it short sleeves and be done with it <laughs> and just just not worry about it but ugh. I'm gonna keep going. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be beautiful and it will be fine and no one's gonna go, oh my gosh, there's a blue line. And if they do, then whatever, whatever. Um, what I do want to say while I'm thinking about it, even though this is a little bit of shop news, is that there are sweater quantities. Um, I get so many compliments on this color right here and there are sweater quantities of my attempt. So it's a tiny bit bluer than mine, but if you were buying three skeins all at once, they would totally match. <laughs> and I think there's two, I think I have like six or eight skeins of it in the shop right now. So you could easily buy yarn for your um, Sunset Highway. And the other thing that I was going to say is there are also lots of um, contrast colors. And if you are needing help picking some good options, then let me know and I'm happy to help. Um, so that is Sunset Highway. Oh my gosh, I can like fold it like an actual garment. That is amazing. That is Sunset Highway. Um, I am dream knitting two more sweaters by her right now. One, I even got so far as caking up the first skein. And then I realized, Diane, if you start this other sweater, you will not have a Rhinebeck sweater. You will not finish it because you will want to be knitting the new one. So don't start it. And I'm not even gonna show you what the yarn is this week because I'll get all excited about it again. I have got to finish that. Like my goal by the next podcast is to have the body of that sweater done. That has to happen for sure. Um, Okay, so that is it for works in progress. For Hello Lovelies this week, I have three things to show you. Um, I took, so glad I did. I took the day on Saturday totally to myself. My family was gone and doing other things. And I thought, you know what, Diane? You don't need to work. You don't need to do any of these other things that you think you need to do. You need to go have a Diane day. So I did, and I drove up to the Modern Skein, which is in Montgomery, Texas, and it's a new, amazing, lovely yarn store. And I hung out for their sit and knit all day and had the best time. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I purchased, she was having a sale because the day before was her birthday, so she was having a little shop sale. I purchased some back issues of Pom Pom Court, actually the current issue and then the two before that. I hadn't gotten like any recently, um, but I purchased those and I'm really excited about some of those summer tops in the current issue right now. It's all cottons and linens and stripes and amazing, beautiful things. Um, so I purchased some of those because she had those on sale and I purchased this skein of hedgehog fibers. Um, 
The Modern Skein is a gorgeous shop that is all hand dyed and indie yarn. So um, the closest thing to big box yarn, and it's still a hand dyed yarn, but the closest thing you're going to find is Malabrigo. Everything else is hand dyed, indie dyed, local, and some things as far as Ching Fiber, which is in the UK, and um, Tote Le Maton, which is French yarn. And she is like the only, outside of like the East Coast and the West Coast of the United States, I think she's the only supplier for Tote Le Maton in like the central Midwest, Southwest part of the United States. So if you wanna get that yarn without paying crazy shipping from overseas, you totally need to go check out the themodernskein.com. Um, anyway, but she had just gotten her first shipment of Hedgehog in, and this is one of the new colors that I did not have. Um, it's called Kimono, and it's a gorgeous, like, navy blue. Really would have been perfect as the first color in that shawl, <laughs> that Gems and Jewels, but I had already started it. So this will have to be saved for the next shawl. So I got that. Um, I participated as many of you did I'm sure in the amazing tits out collective day that was a week and a half ago or so I um, mean I purchased three skeins of yarn from different people only one of them has come in so far because I think most of them were pre-orders um, and all three from dyers that I have never purchased from before I did that on purpose I used this as a reason to support people that I had not purchased from before, as well as people who were supporting causes that I felt strongly about. Um, so I purchased, the one that has come in so far is a skein of Dragon Horde yarn. And this is on her Magic DK base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Or superwash wool is what it says. Superwash wool, 25% nylon. And the colorway is called If I Want Exposure. I'll get I'll get my tits out dragon style. And it's this gorgeous pink base with fun speckles. So thank you, Tristan. And then the last thing that I have opened, and oh my gosh, this is so soft and dreamy. Um, I bought the, I guess this is July, August, and September Homespun House um, Harry Potter Club. And this was the last one that would be dyed in Germany. And it was also, I think, the last time she said that she would have this merino cashmere base because it was a base that she didn't think she could get once she moved here to the U.S. Um, but it is 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. So 20% cashmere, that's why it's so amazing. Um, 407 yards, 100 grams. And so this is the July colorway, spoiler alert. And um, it is called Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes. And I also got the Charm Club as well. So it's a charm from Super Super Miniature. That's the charm, little like a dum dum <laughs> sucker. And that is the skein and it's so fun. I love it. So that's that. Um, that is it for Hello Lovelies shop news. So the Suburban Stitcher shop is going to be going on vacation because we are going on vacation <laughs> and it's my whole family and no one will be here to mail or do any of the things. And we are super excited about that because all four of us need some family time, we need some no screen time, and we need some togetherness. And there is nothing like a whole bunch of togetherness with three day each way road trips. <laughs> So we're getting what we are asking for, for sure. Um, so the shop will be on vacation from July 20th until August 1st. And 
Um, so it will be about 10 days that we won't have any stock in the shop and then we will be putting opening up the shop again um, with an update, probably also some dyed to order listings um, available that will go up August 1st. And yeah, I'm really, really excited about the time off and I hope that y'all can bear with me and hang out um, while we are kind of in that vacation time. So what that means is that this week, right now, and then we just had a shop update this morning at noon and then next week's Wednesday update, my updates now are typically Wednesdays at noon. That has just kind of worked out well for me. Um, Wednesdays at noon and the... Um, next Wednesday will be the last update before the shop goes on vacation that Friday. Um, the, let's see, the advent calendar, Suburban Stitcher is having an advent calendar, um, this year I'm so excited. I have two different base or two different weights that are offered. I have a 10 gram option and a 20 gram option. Both of them will be the exact same yarn um, colorways. They will all be brand new colorways. Some may appear in the shop at a later time as permanent, but they will all be debuting here as part of the advent calendar. And the theme is holiday movie favorites or holiday movie moments. Some of them might just be favorite scenes or favorite memories from a particular movie and some might be just a title of a movie or a character or who knows but they will be 25 of my favorite holiday memories so in that calendar you get 24 mini skeins either the 10 or the 20 and you get one full skein of yarn to open up the 25th or whichever day you choose to and then you will also get about four I think I said five to six in the listing, whatever I said in there is the right number, but five to six or seven little extras. And that could be a stitch marker, it could be tea, it could be some sort of holiday themed treat or notion or something. So um, I am very excited about that. They will all also be blindly wrapped individually so that you cannot see what you have for that day which is good. Um, you can't see it until you open it, obviously. I Hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, so the other things that I want to talk about, I talked about Wednesday, updates on Wednesdays at noon, that next week is the last week before vacation. And lastly, I also want to just re-bring everyone's attention to um, on my website, suburbanstitcher.com, I have a um, link up at the top it says events and the events tab link on that website is where I have listed every event that I will be attending for the year. I actually still even have 2017 if you're interested in that. I will pull that down eventually. But 2018 I have all of the events that I will be attending, vending, anything that Suburban Stitcher has going on whether it's a trunk show yarn or it's just I'm going if you'd like to see me there. Um, and so those things for 2018, like I said, they're listed there right now. Upcoming, I have a newly added trunk show at the Modern Skein. That is September 8th, I believe. And um, I will, that's in Montgomery. I'm telling you right now, you want to be there. I will have all of my fall colorways. I will probably start debuting some Christmas colorways there. Um, not Advent colorways, of course, but just Christmas holiday colors and things for Christmas time. Um, certainly fall things because September is September is our fall. No, it's really still summer here in Texas. Um, anyway, you want to see this shop. And if you haven't been and you don't have a plan to go before then, September 8th needs to be on your calendar. Suburban Stitcher Trunk Show at the Modern Skein. I will be there for most of the day, hanging out, knitting, trunk showing, and y'all need to come see this shop. It is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's worth the drive from wherever you are. <laughs> um, 
so that is an upcoming event. And then I have a um, Rhinebeck. I will be at not vending anything near Rhinebeck. None of the events that are leading up to it. Um, I am in attendance. I am helping friends who are doing fun things there. And I am just happy to be a civilian that week. <laughs> that weekend. So I would love to meet you all there. And, um, and then after Rhinebeck, I don't think I have any big official things. I have some, um, you know, I might have some other kits or some other things happening. So just keep your ears peeled for some of those things. But, um, I think that's it. Um, okay. Hope y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.